Right, yes, this is the second bit. Here's my question for you. Right, I'm tempted not to cover it. I want you to have a go at this. It's really, really hard to do. But I want you to spend the time trying it. Worst case is look on the completed pack, but I'd largely do not. Right, so let's have a look at the second example then. Hang on. So, I'll be ready for this. So, first principles. Right. So, I've got two points. One of them is if I put x in, I get sine x out. And the other point is if I move it across slightly, I get that out. So remember, the whole point of this is two points that are really close to each other. X, and then X plus H. And I do the tangent between them. So remember, the way I've told you to do first principles, which might be slightly different to how other teachers show it, is to work out the gradient between the two points. So that would be sine of X plus H minus sine X. And then x plus h minus x, changing y over changing x. Remember, sine of a plus b is uh, sine a cos b plus sine b cos a. It might be that second bit is written as cos a sine b, it doesn't really matter. Right, so gradient is sine of. So x plus h is going to be sine x cos h plus sine h cos x minus sine x all over h. Right. Let's have a look. Now the h bit is really, really small. So the h bit is really, really small. H is really small, because I don't want it to be that far away. So because of that, I can use my small angle approximations. Now I know that sine h will become h, and cos h will become 1 minus a half of h squared. From my, it's actually there, isn't it? But there and there. Let's change that. So now, my gradient is sine x times 1 minus a half h squared, because uh, I'm changing that cos h, plus sine h becomes a h times by cos x minus sine x all over h. If I expand that top line, I get a sine x minus a half of h squared sine x plus a h cos x minus a sine x all over h. Now, do you remember me telling you when we did first principles last time around, there'll be a point where anything without h disappears. And if you look, it's done it again here. The sine x and the sine x is cancelled. So now I've got... What have I got? So I've got minus a half h squared sine x plus h cos x all over h. And that was my checking point, wasn't it? To make sure that the, the equation I've got doesn't have anything that doesn't have a h in it. So now I can divide through. Oh, it's not dy by dx. Oh, we'll get rid of that. Don't put dy by dx down. Scribble it out as fast as you can. That's just the gradient of the product, that's all. If I divide through by h, that's a half h sine x plus cos x. So that's my gradient of my chord. All right. So now I need to write down what my proper full equation is. Other teachers are getting to write this down at the start. But I think it's overcomplicating it by putting it all in. Now dy by dx is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. I put it in there, but if it's seen anyway, it's all right. But what must be done as well is our equation substituted into that part there. 
So my minus a half h sine x plus cos x. Now the whole point of this limiting process, if you remember, which I'm sure you do, is that on this point here, I drag it so close to the other point that you can't tell there's two points. But what it means is that the h doesn't become zero, but it gets so small it almost looks like zero. So any term which has got a h in it now will just disappear. There we go. I've shown properly that if I differentiate sine x, I get cos x using half, well, using the, the compound angle formulas, using the fact that the distance is so small and it's in radians, it's got to be in radians. Didn't mention that before. It's got to be in radians. That if I differentiate sine, it goes to cos. Now, there is one for you to have a go at. I'm not going to show this, I want you to follow this, but you have to use cos a plus b, cos x plus h. There. Right, let's have a look at the next one there. No. So there's another one, I'm going to stop this vid and do it as a separate one.